Hello everyone, my name is Shweta Sharan and welcome to another episode of Tapas Talkies. Tapas Talkies is a series that's envisioned by the Tapas Progressive Education Learning Space helped by Preeti Vikram and Shruti Ratan. Every week we will come up with exciting videos and talks with people in education, inspiring people in education. And today's guest is someone that we have been really eager to talk with. Today's guest is Simran Oberoi Mumpani. She is a healthy baking evangelist, a social entrepreneur, a community leader for a 36,000 member group called Oh Wonderful Mom Bakers Community. You must have heard of it. It's very popular. This is a globally recognized uh, award-winning healthy baking community. And it was created for uh, having a wider social impact. A bit more about Simran, apart from being the founder of Oh Wonderful, she has also been recognized by Cheryl Sandberg as one of the eight influential Facebook community leaders in Asia. She is a TEDx speaker, a Shiro's champion, and she workshops a lot with schools, corporate organizations like Nissan India, Unilever, Indus Early Learning, and Purna. She has been covered in Economic Times, the Indian Express, Sunday Standard, The Telegraph, Deccan Herald, Times of India, DNA, and Deccan Chronicle. Simran is also a mother to two little humans, as she uh, says in her own words, and two senior adopted canine kids. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So Simran, welcome to Tapas Talkies. I am really excited to speak to you. You're someone who I love to follow on Facebook and Instagram. You are truly an inspiration, not just in terms of how you have drawn the attention to healthy cooking and eating, but also as someone who really uh, gets a positive message across in every post that you know you create. So it's great to have you on uh, Tapas Talkies today. Thank you so much, Feta. I'm very happy to be here on Tapas Talkies. I think it's uh, so nice to see, you know, a platform like this, which is uh, taking across very important messages to a much wider audience. So thank you so much for having me here. Most welcome. The pleasure is all ours. And I feel that with the pandemic, I as a person and as a mom have really shifted gears when it comes to how I cook and how all of us eat. I guess the focus is so much on health now. And right. what I love about what you do is you don't just look at it from the point of view of, you know, healthy eating and baking. You also uh, bring in so many other factors when you post on Facebook. I see that you talk about positivity. You talk about uh, so many different things. And I have right. sort of a, a, a full uh, a meal, you know, when I <laughs> look at the posts that you do and how you share your love for baking. So I would really like to talk to you today uh, about how uh, parents and moms and dads, uh, how they can approach healthy eating with their children and how, you know, it can become something that the entire family can embrace the, which we have to as a family we have started eating very uh, in a very healthy manner and my daughter right. who used to be uh, you know she used to love her uh, occasional french fries but these days she herself on her own feels that she needs to eat uh, and go for healthier uh, alternatives uh, i guess right. because of the pandemic and because <laughs> there's so much focus on health but you were someone who was doing this even before uh, all this happened. So right. uh, I, I hope that today's talk inspires other parents who are also looking at ways to, uh, you know, uh, really make their cooking and eating healthy because uh, all of us are indoors, especially our kids. And, right. uh, you know, uh, health and fitness becomes so important in, uh, absolutely right now. So uh, my first question to you is, uh, we often hear people say that healthy food is not tasty. And that children are not particularly worried about health like their parents are. Mm. So what can parents do to make the meal healthy and yet tasty? Um, you know, so I think, Shweta, uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that, you know, this, this whole concept or this idea about, you know, healthy is not tasty. It becomes a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. The more you say it, the more you start believing it, okay? Uh, even though it's not true. You know, so if you're, if, if parents, uh, you know, say this to themselves in their minds or, uh, you know, uh, say it aloud to the children or if the children keep saying it, then even though healthy food, which is usually tasty, uh, it, it seems that it's not going to be. 
so we need to firstly i think the first thing that parents need to do uh, usually to make it healthy to make healthy basically tasty is to uh, is to approach it like you in fact i'm taking a you know leaf out of what you just shared is uh, by speaking about it positively okay so i think that's the first step that you know your your whatever words you use to describe healthy food whatever uh, you know explanations you give to the children whatever manner in which you speak to uh, your children with respect to uh, uh, healthy eating uh, it should be something that they are able to um, absorb it should be something that they are able to imbibe it's not it should not seem like something that they want to resist uh, it should not be something that it's inexplicable i just can't understand you know what my parents are explaining to me so i think that is one big element that i think starts off the journey of healthy eating uh, by uh, sensitizing children in a way that you're speaking positively about healthy food okay or the way in which you are actually presenting it to them that you know okay you uh, i mean i've seen so many parents who are uh, you know when they present healthy healthy food also uh, it's like you know they want to create a reward mechanism if you eat this you can eat this you know or it's uh, something like you know um, that it's very important for you even if you don't like it you must eat it you know so i think there is a way in which we can say these things of course nobody is going to like everything of course it's going to take time but i think a lot of uh, information that goes to the children goes in a manner in which we are ourselves not uh, sharing it positively so as parents i think that's the first step that will help to make healthy tasty okay the second is to make the food relatable uh, so i mean instead of telling your child that you know this raw salad is healthy it is healthy but i think you know as a parent uh, you should not be generalizing and saying that you know a pizza is not healthy a, a, a bread is not healthy okay no cuisine is unhealthy what goes into it is unhealthy okay so what you're using it it what ingredients you're putting in it are in, are in healthy a lot of times and the second thing that makes it unhealthy is when we don't do it at home ourselves okay because there are million other things that are added when it comes from the market or it comes from the store so i think instead of generalizing or uh, saying things which are not relatable for children create the healthy options with things that they enjoy consuming create healthy options with things that they will relate to they will enjoy eating there will be differences they may not like it in the first go which is why you know i work in healthy baking also because i think our general presumption is that you know healthy uh, that baking is unhealthy okay which is true if you were going to the bakery and buying something it's highly unhealthy but the point is that the same can be made healthy by switching the ingredients by using certain substitutes which are going to work very well and also create things which are going to be some things that children can easily eat and they will not resist so much because of the type of thing that they okay so i think that's the second way to make things uh, which are healthy uh, you know tasty from the mindset or from a perception of a child the third is to research okay i think research a lot about what is in season uh, research a lot about what is locally produced i think we don't do that often enough uh, you know we often switch uh, stick to things which are within our comfort zone even as adults you know so uh, obviously a child is also going to stick to that so for us uh, for our children to step out of their comfort zone we have to step out of our comfort zone and we have to say that you know what we are used to eating this doesn't mean we're going to eat this this is not in season i just don't have to keep making it just because you know uh, uh, this is a vegetable that we all eat if there's a new vegetable which is in season and which is locally produced it should be in your menu and that's important you know so i think making that journey of transition instead of saying that you know we are as parents we want to make our child eat healthy as pe- as family we all need to eat healthy it doesn't matter whether the child eats it or you eat it you all should be eating it so it's that is that is where the food starts becoming healthy because uh, you know i don't know i think today morning i was reading some article where uh, you know somebody was mentioning that uh, you know that you know it's not what the children will do what you say uh, but they will do what you do yes okay so i think that is what is important you know that you as a parent will have to uh, uh, you know take those actions uh, to ensure that you are you know you are moving towards healthy eating yourself and that's when the healthy food becomes tasty even for the child so i think those are some things that parents can start following and there are many more but i think these are the most effective that i have uh, you know found and have helped me yeah yeah absolutely and i agree with you because there are times when i i love salads for instance i right. really love salads and whenever yeah. i order them uh, you know the my friends tell me why why are you doing this to yourself and i, I want to tell them it's really tasty and it's yeah, right. like it's really yeah. i mean and same with healthy food if they are really tasty it just depends on how you uh, approach them like you said and how you also make them and i i totally okay. agree with what you said about you know researching and getting good ingredients so i was i always scroll through your 
profile and I really am tempted to make the zucchini chips and the <laughs> flax seed uh, buns that you had posted the recipe right. because they look really uh, tasty and they're also healthy and right. uh, and now that we have us my uh, family and I are so used to healthy cooking we are not able to eat the processed foods that we get from right. the shops. It, it, it tastes too sweet I mean, we right. can make out that it just doesn't taste right. right. So we're kind of used to it. Very true. Sure. Yeah. So uh, I mean, we do have a couple of days a month when we do eat something. Right. Uh, Absolutely. But we actually love uh, healthy food. So I, to I totally understand, uh, you know, and really uh, agree with what you say. Uh, mm -hmm. So the second question I have is, uh, so what are some of the most used ingredients in your kitchen? Because I know that I follow you on Instagram and on Facebook and I <laughs> use a lot of uh, certain ingredients. And uh, I know that uh, with a lot of focus on healthy eating, there are certain right. ingredients that we realize are really uh, good, you know, for right. this, uh, entire conversation about millets. I eat a lot of millet in my yeah. food as well. So what are some of the most often used ingredients in the kitchen? Uh, so uh, one thing is that I love to experiment with flowers. Okay, so I mean, in my baking journey in the last ten years, uh, ten twelve years of healthy baking, I uh, have baked with around forty different flowers. So I have this, you know, like really big, uh, you know, uh, involvement with uh, different flowers. So I uh, enjoy baking. So you will see a range of flowers in my house. You know, so whether it's millets, whether it's millet grains, and then bake, making that into flour. Uh, you know, whether it's just flour, the, the direct flour themselves, whether it is, um, you know, almond and coconut flours, which I started baking with because I wanted to do low carb baking, uh, you know, so um, whether it's that, whether it is, like you said, flax seeds, so whether it's seed based flours, you'll find a range of that, that those ingredients are used very commonly uh, in my house. The other thing is, uh, like you mentioned, zucchini, so uh, a range of vegetables, you know, so again, I think uh, uh, that's unlimited. So I try to uh, incorporate anything I can, you know, in anything. So uh, that's, I think, the, the logic I use. You know, I think a lot of people have a hard and fast rule about how it should be. But for me, it's all about experimenting. So I use a range of vegetables. So you'll find um, a, a, a variety of vegetables of all kinds. Uh, usually, usually uh, you know, uh, low starch or uh, non-starchy uh, in the house uh, almost every, every single day. And the third thing is that, you know, I... Uh, I love experimenting uh, with uh, nut-based, you know, butters and milks. So, I mean, I, I can eat it as it is and I can yeah, and I use it as it is. So, uh, I think that is one thing that I um, have realized that we have so much of, as I don't know if this is worldwide, but I think in India, we have so much of unhealthy uh, obsession with milk that we need to have, we need to have alternatives, which I'm also, uh, I've opened my eyes to in the last 10 years. And I think many people need to do it. Uh, there are options in the market and there are options that you can use at home but I mean that's a sort of conversation for another time but I think that's the other thing that you know that's another staple you'll always find you know that I bake with I cook with uh, I try to incorporate as much as possible yeah and I I know uh, that you sometimes ask us to guess as well what are the ingredients right use. Yes. I love doing that because <laughs> the texture looks yeah. so good and sometimes you will never imagine that you had that used is, a certain flour exactly yeah exactly you know yeah, it, it's it's amazing. I mean, I think it's just the excitement of trying to do different things that is, uh, you know, and then trying to share it with people, you know, I think that's just really nice. Yeah, and uh, I, I am someone who, uh, so I uh, have two online jobs that I, uh, you know, sort of, right. but in spite of that, I find that this is a misconception that it takes a really long time to make healthy food, but it's not really true. Uh, I, I, so now I don't buy mayonnaise from outside. I, I make it at home or I, or I make things at home. It doesn't really consume that much time. Same with pasta sauce, which I used to buy outside and I make it Absolutely. at home. It doesn't Absolutely. take that much time. And uh, I know that it's true with the ingredients that you, I mean, those recipes that you post as well, a few of that I'm doing. They didn't take that much time and right. it really felt good eating them. You know that you're not, you know, consuming junk. Yeah, uh, so, exactly. yeah, so uh, uh, my next question to you is, uh, so what are some of your favorite tricks to uh, uh, include nutrition without compromising on taste to kind of pack in that nutrition into a, you know, a, so, a, a recipe? So I, I, so, I mean, there can, again, there can be many tips, but I think two which uh, have really worked Again, I and I think which are very practical. Uh, one is that you know you should know how to uh, balance flavors. Okay, so um, you know your flavor combinations are very very critical when you're doing something you know with healthy ingredients because 
some of the healthy ingredients have a strong uh, indigenous taste inherently they are, they have a strong flavor some of them are milder uh, so you know when you end up mixing two of them there should there should be some sort of balance there should be some sort of uh, matching of flavors uh, so that it doesn't one doesn't overpower the other so those kind of things i think that is the first thing that you know flavor combination so i'll just give you an example so uh, you know like you mentioned the uh, the millet cookies right so by hit and trial i realized you know when i was doing baking was that ragi and dark chocolate is an amazing combination i would have never dreamt that dark chocolate and ragi would have worked so well right but that's also like i said you know but that is one combination that i mean it i think it's a match made in heaven which i never i mean i make it for my tarts you know the combin- the the uh, you know the the crust of the tarts you know you don't need to add anything in that if you do dark chocolate and ragi together so all i'm saying is that you know there is there are many such you know uh, combinations there is no hard and fast rule uh, i can't you know tell you that these combinations will work i mean i can tell you but they may not work for you so you have to find your own flavor combinations by your trial and error but do it and find and there are combinations that work really well so that is what makes sure that you know the nutrients are intact and at the same time you're not compromising on the taste okay that's one the second is knowing your child's palate okay so in the context of children um i know my children love anything crispy and they eat it okay anything crunchy and they eat it okay so uh, knowing what your child's preference is whether it's in terms of texture whether it's in terms of flavors you know so which herbs they enjoy which seeds they enjoy even if they don't enjoy it what what are they saying when they eat something you know that they like and that will give you a lot of direction that should become your guiding principle to do healthy cooking healthy baking you know because that tip is a, a you know is something that will never go wrong because like i said you know that you need to uh, if you if you want to ensure that your child eats healthy uh, you have to find uh, you know ways in which to make your child eat healthy so you have to ensure that you know you are ingre- including ingredients smartly you know because i mean at the end of the day uh, frankly i think you know it becomes a tug of war otherwise okay and the second thing that i think a lot of parents i I'm, i'm not saying this from uh, you know from a high moral ground i've done it myself you know before i actually uh, reached a stage uh, that i am now uh, in the past i've also done that you know that i have uh, you know spent felt a sense of achievement if my child has uh, you know forced it down their throat okay because it's there on the plate they have to eat it so they are eating okay but the point is that i when i stopped thinking about it as okay i'm winning as a parent okay because my child is eating i i think i became better at my baking at my healthy cooking at baking and cooking uh, with the health intact and at the same time making it tasty and what my children will eat okay because i started thinking of it as something that i was creating as a habit for them you know i started thinking of it not that okay this one meal needs to be ticked off i am said i am doing something which they need to prioritize when they are older you know they need to be able to in fact today in the lunch table i had this very long conversation with them also about this that you know i mean mama can tell you this and mama can make you eat this right now but after 10 years you're going to not eat it unless you want to eat it yes. okay and if you don't want to eat it you will not eat it and that means you will not prioritize your own health so today i am setting something like a habit for them uh, you know for them to be able to follow through their life uh, for their own health you know so the moment i started thinking like that i switched the way i was cooking and baking i became more observant i became more aware of what they were responding to well what feedback they were giving me when they were eating and then i started incorporating that so i think that is the other thing that really worked, that really helps yeah i totally uh, agree because i have a friend who who she was so uh, keen that the, her daughters should be very eat only healthy food you know so she would really make it a a strict sort of a mandate you have to eat this have to eat Correct. This. now her daughters are grown up and they eat whatever they want they Correct. don't care and Correct. there was no point in having such a strict <laughs> regime you know when they themselves don't find the need to kind of really embrace that uh, and uh, it's not just in your uh, later years that you need to start uh, right from Correct. the beginning it's important to kind of uh, give yourself the benefit of good nutrition Uh, so so it uh, so i i think that it's uh, important and i think tapas also believes that you know uh, yes. the child should be at the center of these explorations they should take it forward themselves uh, and um, and i remember when uh, so tapas also partners with me nacha foundation which is run right. by me i remember we had uh, you had uh, you and gayatri had set up this beautiful food mela in uh, you know a few years yes. ago i was yeah, i remember it was amazing i was amazing. amazed at how 
great the food tasted you know um, absolutely we're all made with very healthy ingredients with ingredients, without yes. uh, you know without gluten without uh, you know uh, uh, refined flours yeah refined sugars and, yes uh, it absolutely. was amazing i said i don't want to leave this place ever it's better than any meal i've ever had so i feel that we really need to remove this misconception that you know, i think it actually tastes better because yes. it's very wholesome it doesn't sit up it doesn't it's not un, uh, you know it doesn't sit like a rock in my tummy uh, exactly but, absolutely yeah yeah and um, so i also wanted to ask you um, so if i was doing a meal prep for a week how right. should i go about it uh so i think the first thing is that you know you need everybody should actually try i know it sounds uh, idealistic but i think it's just a little bit of work uh, should have a me- menu plan okay you should have a, a a meal plan for the entire week okay and uh, it always works at least it helps me because given that everybody is really working currently and everybody is working from home uh, it's very very important to have some level of um, you know food planning organized so have a menu a plan uh very optimizing ingredients okay so like for example kala chana should not be used only in gravy use it for a patty also you know so i mean think of multiple ways in which you know use that patty in a burger whatever make when you make the burger bun at home or what things like that so i'm just giving you an example of one ingredient but there are many such ingredients which you will need to explore uh you know and see and use them in multiple cuisines you know in different ways okay so that it saves you time uh it also uh, ensures that that optimal level of nutrition that is needed from that ingredient is reaching the uh reaching the children reaching you okay so those things will really help and you get a different kind of cuisine that is there you know so you don't uh, end up eating just the same kind of uh, cuisine or same kind of food uh, every day or every second day that's one the second is um you know so things that can be pre made you should pre bake okay so i think use the weekend okay bake your bread bake your crackers bake your biscuits uh, whatever your kids eat you know which is healthy and you can do at home make your chutney make your sauce whatever i mean i just feel that just make that and uh, keep it uh, because it is going to work fine so baking that way works very well because i think uh, a lot of people get daunted by the fact that you i mean i've never baked i don't know what's going to happen nothing is going to happen i tell everybody that if i can bake anybody can bake okay i didn't know how to cook till about uh, 2000 when was this 2007 2008 okay so i mean i didn't even know how to cook Okay, so forget baking, and uh, which is why I think you know it's just about it's just a mindset. You know, you just have to push yourself. You just have to uh, do some trials, okay, and uh, find a set of tried and tested recipes which will work. Find a set of uh, you know ingredients that will work for you. It takes a little while initially, but you will get a hang of it. Okay, so whatever you can do, uh, which can stay, so baked stuff stays long, uh, good for at least a week, four to five days minimum. you know so try to do all of that uh, you know with the help because what will happen is if you try to do it in a rush either it won't get done okay or second you won't have the time to do it so you'll grab whatever's in front and eat it or the kids will grab whatever's in front and eat that okay so to avoid those two issues this is the best option okay that you can uh, you know especially for these mid meal things uh, you know where you need to otherwise you end up making stuff i mean in india we have like this huge obsession of being in the kitchen all the time so uh which is why you see with my recipes they're mostly very simple because i want to keep it healthy i want to keep it nutritious but i also want to keep it quick i don't want to spend fair 15 hours in the kitchen so um you know so that is uh, the other thing okay with meal planning uh the uh, third thing that i feel uh, you know uh, usually works is that changing the week menu to some extent so which goes back to my first point where i said seasonal okay so see what's in season you know and try to keep a little bit of change i'm not saying you change it uh, every week or whatever some dals and some staples will remain the same okay but try to incorporate uh, what is in season at least a couple of new things every week okay because then one is you know you cannot tell your children, you cannot complain about children who don't eat everything if you don't give them everything right so i mean my onus as a parent is to expose them to everything like with any other form of learning you know and then they will take to it as much as they can or they will and with consistent uh, consistent effort over, over a period of time they will develop that okay that flavor but that's the whole idea of even menu plan and lastly very important again like with you know milk uh, we are so obsessed with our grain grains and lentils that we forget some other parts which are very important to include in our daily uh, eating habits okay your fruits your vegetables your nuts and your seeds yes. four things which i just feel are so underrated because dal chawal is important roti and chana is important roti and sabzi roti and dal whatever is important so i mean it's important but at the same time these are four things which need to be in your plan if you don't put it in your plan you're not going to get it done and you're not going to eat 
okay so when you do your menu planning please do not forget these four uh, food groups or uh, you know a food category and have them every single day it's not something i don't need to eat uh, you know i don't need to eat uh, seeds once a week i need to eat them every day yes so that is something that your children will also learn today if my daughter is is coming and telling me give me seeds to eat okay i'll feel good about it right because my child is exposed to it she wants to eat it every day but that has taken time and effort and consistent practice of doing it every day so that is how your menu should you know so these are some things that i would suggest parents should uh, try to incorporate or you know busy uh, adults like us <laughs> should try to incorporate into our menu menus yeah absolutely i am uh, we are big uh, uh, fans of seeds at home as well and, uh, <laughs> lovely uh, yeah and i uh, never knew that my daughter would take to it but she did she correct really yeah exactly i was amazed she never would even eat cereal if i gave it correct you know uh, i would uh, many years ago i give her uh, you know these uh, uh, corn flakes these choco flakes she would say no i don't want no it. correct exactly now, yeah so now we use nuts and uh, seeds with our oats and cereal absolutely and even stand alone she loves them so i think yeah. actually, i i 100% agree that you know so many important nutrients are there in these correct things that we totally should uh embrace when when it comes and uh, meal plan yes i totally uh, agree that you know we should prepare those sauces in advance we should uh, prepare those items in advance and if we can right. really plan it it's actually not that hard uh, i am the one who is the worst organized person in the world we have kids <laughs> we have kids who can do it for us <laughs> i know but i feel that it's not that hard if you really right. sort of think a little uh, absolutely uh, advance and uh, sort of simplify it for yourself instead of making it too uh, you know Very complicated so uh, yeah i i it's it's uh, i'm really happy you brought up seeds because you're a big seeds fan at home yeah <laughs> so and, I, we love seeds <laughs> yeah and uh, uh, so uh, my uh, next question is how can parents involve their children in food related prep and in making decisions about food uh so i think the most important thing is that you know you need to understand that a child can be involved at any stage okay i think we get worried and hassle that oh it's a 2 year old child or oh, it's a 3 year old child or oh, it's a 10 year old child now he will not uh, learn or she will not learn i mean a 2 year old can also learn and a 10 year old can also learn and a 15 18 year old can also learn yes. okay it's entirely up to you yes they have to be given age appropriate stuff depending on what they're doing in the kitchen uh you know but i think involving them is very 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 important from right from the beginning okay so whether it is related to uh, you know so for example you know making the list of what you're going to order okay from the market uh, whether it is if you're ordering it online help it taking their help in terms of doing the grocery shopping if whenever whenever the situation permits and you're able to step out taking them to do that grocery shop okay it starts with that the second is and i'm not saying anything new we've done that with our parents also you know so i mean so many of us would have done a, a few of those things with our parents so uh, it's just that we needed we've just forgotten how to do it you know with our children so i think that's that's one the second is you know so like my son i started training him to read labels very fast okay so the moment he started reading things i started helping him understand okay read this label read this label now he makes a so anything that comes from outside he makes us cut out uh, the pack and keep the back aside because he wants to read it okay he wants to read what is there in it what is okay what is not okay okay so the thing is that you know that is where uh, that is our role as a parent we need to create uh, you know uh individuals who are discerning and have to understand what's good for them or not at some point in time we will have to stop saying you know eat this eat that can't eat this can't eat that they will have to decide it on their own right how can you do it by involving them okay so the more involved they are the more interested they will be the more interest and the more involved they are the more empowered they will be because they will be taking the decisions on their own at some point in time the child should be able to uh, you know come back to you and say let's not order this because these are the five things that are there which are not okay so that is where we need to uh, involve our children and then of course basically with everything at home you know so i mean whether you're baking whether you're cooking uh, whether you're chopping depending again on the age of the child whether you're um, you know i mean you 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 know you work with so many schools right the montessori method will tell you that tell the child to roll dough, roll dough the montessori method will tell you tell the child to make uh, you know keep playing with uh, you know the atta because it helps them you know so that's what i'm saying you know it's not just helping them from an education or the uh you know motor skills point of view it's actually sensitizing sensitizing them about their food you know uh you know whenever possible help them understand what it takes to grow food help them understand what it takes for you to make that food for them you know because i think effort is very very important for children to understand 
okay today if i am making a specialized meal for my child which is extremely healthy i want my child to understand that there is x amount of effort that is gone to be able to which finally does transforms into a great dish which one we consume in 5 minutes but it may have taken 3 hours to make okay that 3 hours is what he or she needs to understand okay that value of that time and effort is very important and that comes only when the child does it with him, with you himself or herself you know so those are some small ways in which you know i make my son write all my recipes when i'm making the measurements i just tell him write this down write this down because i have to because i don't want to get in the middle of trying to type at that point in time my hands are messy i don't want to go around typing on my laptop and i don't have the inclination when i'm in the flow of trying to measure stuff and uh, start baking uh, you know i have lists which he has made written down all of the ingredients uh, you know measured out okay big i mean like i said you know it's indirectly it's important for them to understand uh, you know we can't expect our children to have any form of love for uh, food or specific ingredients until they are doing it on their own you know and until i mean we can like i said we can do only so much so but after a point in time they will have to do it on their own so some things i think these are some ways in which if you can involve your child uh, you know in those tasks uh, it really really helps you know and i think it grows their ability to take decisions tremendously i can personally say this uh after having seen that change in my own son uh that you know it increases your ability uh to take decisions i mean i uh, so i mean i think a lot of people are aware of uh, you know my my daughter's diagnosis of uh, you know type 1 and we uh, there were certain things that we uh, uh, we were already so i was relieved to see that a lot of things that we were already doing were working fine we didn't have to undergo a drastic amount of change in terms of our eating pattern uh but what i realized was that things like you know so when i was trying to read up about things or nutritional value about certain uh, flours or certain things that we got from the market my son knew how to read behind and say mama this has too much carbohydrate that child is able to read behind and say that this has got too much carbohydrate i don't this is going to spike her sugar okay so i mean that is the level of understanding uh, uh, you know which becomes very very important you know for a child because that child understands health in entirety then does not just understand health as a as a uh, one meal thing you know so i think that is that becomes a very important exercise as parents if we can start doing that yes absolutely it's amazing that he uh, read the label and he said that we can yes. <laughs> this is incredible uh, and i think that's really uh, wonderful for children to know uh, what you said is so important the time that uh, you spend in making a meal what goes into food to really understand the value of food even though even though you may not necessarily become a baker or a chef correct right, exactly yeah it, you just it, need it, to value the effort you know you need to i mean and again i think this is particularly important in india because we have somebody doing the cooking for us whether it's our parents whether it's uh, some house help you know or cooks somebody is doing it right? right so for our children it's even more important you know to understand that there's so much value of and time that goes in into making one meal nutritious for you you right, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> and uh, I, 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 I totally resonate with that. And I, uh, I also love how when you post about uh, post a uh, recipe, you also talk about so many other things. Maybe an incident yes. that happened at home. Maybe uh, something that you enjoyed. You know, the, the sound of uh, raindrops outside your window, or yes. uh, nature in a, in a certain way, or something that you happened to you a previous year. So, how Correct. you weave that into the a conversation of food is really wonderful because again food is not just about us eating it uh, it's, it's so much more it is part so of uh, us in, in, and it will sort of contribute to us uh, you know and have a lasting impact on us so Absolutely. Uh, so yeah so i finally just want to ask uh, 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 simran how do you think schools can encourage children to uh, you know uh, also uh, understand food in a better way okay so i think uh, while some schools are already doing it but i think some one way to do it is to keep it more practical uh, because i think a lot of schools spend a lot of time explaining the concept you know so what are food groups and what exactly are crops and things like that but i think there are very few schools who actually uh, and again i'm i'm hoping this will happen more in the post pandemic world uh, once schools open but i think you know getting them more hands on you know uh, i mean trying to understand one that things like cooking and baking are not uh, extra curricular activities it's a life skill yes. it's a it's a it's not uh, you know something you will do in passing it's not something that you will do because i have extra time at hand you must do it every day okay so yeah. it's as important as say exercise you know 
so I, i'm just saying you know so these are so that that, that fundamental shift in uh, the way we view uh, whether it's food whether it's nutrition whether it's cooking whether it's baking uh, has to happen and schools can lead that change because they define how children view things you know so uh, parents can do it to some extent right but i think schools a lot of times the schools and the teachers because they mentor children because they guide the children uh, you know how they position certain things will have a lot of impression on the mind will have a very different impression on the minds of the kids so if you position it as like i said you know as a life skill that's important and then you map it with things like that you know so you have the cooking uh you know uh, assignments you uh, make sure that those are valued in the same important way okay um you make sure that it's not uh, you know sidelined as a as a subject uh, as an understanding uh, thing uh, that's important and the second is uh, you know encouraging children to share what they do you know so i think uh, like i said you know so a lot of children now have started cooking started baking started uh, you know exploring food right so encourage them to share their experiences Uh, allow them to talk about it because see what happens is that if one child is doing it today uh, 50 others will do it tomorrow if they hear that one child talking about it okay that is the amount that when we talk about you know the the influence of peers that's what it is okay so i think cooking baking all these things work very well when we talk about uh, you know how uh, peers can influence each other okay so for children i think schools can create that environment where peer to peer uh, learning can happen for something like cooking baking uh, you know uh, from a health point of view then i think the other thing is to get people from different spaces to talk about it to children okay so like i said you know tie that whole cycle of get, how many uh, tell me how many kids actually how many of our kids actually have met a farmer they would have never met him i mean uh, it's just not for, i just don't know i mean i just feel that we are living in a bubble you know yeah you know so uh, i just feel that that is where the educational part about uh you know our learning or our children's food or uh, food related learning lies to understand the source to understand you know who grows it to understand who produces it uh you know because what they see is as you know which is why you know if we are complaining today that our children have a consumerist mindset um you know somewhere we are all the whole ecosystem is got to uh, be blamed you know we have got to uh, take onus of the fact that maybe the way we are doing things is not right you know if we have not exposed them to things like you know like i said like a farm a farmer or uh you know the person who uh, manages the cattle the person who uh, you know gets your food across to you uh, any of that uh, you have no you have no context okay you have no context of about what's happening in the background and um, then it's not really fair to blame the child you know or the children or the generation so that is where i think schools can play a role about exposing them to uh, different stakeholders in your entire food uh, you know food cycle you know so people who will like you know you and i are talking so people who can come and talk to children you know in a way that they understand in a way that they uh, uh, adapt to it in a way that they are comfortable with it okay and then of course you know which i think a few kids have people are doing but i think there my grouse is that they do it only in summer workshops you know so you know things like do healthy baking do it for two months things like you know healthy cooking do it uh, no fire cooking do it for one month you know so not not, not something like that it has to be something that we do day okay uh, you know something that we can try to uh you know have uh, as a, as a important uh, exercise for the children to do uh, and uh, i think those are certain things that uh, you know schools can definitely start doing much more much more uh, than what we're doing right now uh, not to take away from the fact that there are schools who are already doing it but i think that's a very small percentage uh, a lot more schools can actually do it you know and uh, you know help them understand even something basic like how they how food is grown you know i think that is something which i mean uh, i don't think an 8 or 10 year old even knows at this point in time yes yes absolutely and uh, i agree that you know us having so, someone like you, uh, you even people who work with food to come and talk to children would be really a great idea because i know that yes parents influence children a lot by how, what we do but so do schools so uh, i have ha- had my daughter come and tell me uh, they talked about you know sustainability today i i don't know do this survey and at she is adamant you know let's not do this you have to keep you know uh, segregate the waste you have to do it you have exactly i am so amazed because i was never like that you know? correct but, same uh, here absolutely yeah, yeah so i if someone like you as someone uh, from the of uh, the from the space goes and talks to them i think it will really make an impact and to yeah. really make it part of life every day and to have uh, cooking as a life skill because you know i mean right. that's what i tell my daughter so you need to learn to cook and to take care exactly. of exactly 
you know self it, absolutely uh, it uh, whoever it is so that is a life skill that you will need for the rest of your life so uh, yeah so i totally agree and i hope that we do have more schools that you know uh, will have this uh, you know as part of in fact they're part of, in a sense part of school part of curriculum itself so absolutely thank you i hope so too <laughs> yeah yeah uh, hopefully soon uh, so thank you so much simran it's always a pleasure to talk to you i know i uh you know uh, enjoy your posts and i uh, you know read your uh, instagram stories so often it's it always brings a smile to my face it always makes me yeah. feel positive so thank it is wonderful to talk to you and i wish you much success in thank all you the so other much. things you're going to do